Hello everybody, this is Comics Revolt's audio reviews, and today we'll be taking a look at Frank Miller's Lance Blastoff, which appeared in Dark Horse Presents uh, 100 part, part 1 and Dark Horse Presents number 114, I believe. Uh, yeah, 114. Um, now, these two stories, which feature his hero Lance Blastoff, are... Uh, fairly unknown to f Frank Miller fans, and I've never heard of them until a few days ago. Um, and there's a specific reason for that, and that unfortunately is that they're not very good. Uh, Frank Miller, who usually is a very good writer and artist, has turned in something that where he's tried to satire American pop culture and America culture as a whole, but in that process he's made something quite trashy. Um, and it almost becomes ridiculous. Uh, the main hero of the story, Lance Blastoff, is basically a um, symbol of everything that is wrong with American culture. He uh, is greedy, he's obsessive, he um, only cares about uh, women sexually, uh, he doesn't respect the views of others, I mean, you could say this about any any culture, but I get the feeling that w with this story, Frank Miller's taken a particular um, critique on American culture. Um, this is obvious through the presence of huge malls and fast food diners and places like this. Um, in the first story, the introductory story, uh, it tells the story of this woman who is on this dinosaur planet, and she's giving tour guide tours uh, throughout it saying dinosaurs are better than humans because they're free of worry and sorrow and everything's balanced naturally. Um, then the Tyrannosaurus Rex comes up behind her, eats the ship and eats all her cohorts and she's about to be eaten and then da -da, Lance Blastoff comes along and he s saves her and she says just fly us away we don't need to kill the dinosaur but he shoots the dinosaur and kills it. Um, he, she then c continues to ask him, why, why did you kill the dinosaur? And he says, well, I wanted to eat it. And um, she, being a vegetarian, says, I will never eat meat. And he says, well, actually, just smell it. And she smells it, and then she eats the dinosaur. And she says, oh, I've always needed meat, and I've always needed man. And then the story ends, and Lance Blastoff says, that's for you, kids. Um, now, this first story, although it's interesting, it's probably the best of the two Lance, Lance Blastoff stories. Um, but on its own, when you're thinking about it, it's not that good. Uh, the characters are unrealistic. I mean, this is satire, so we have to expect that. But Lance Blastoff isn't someone that you can admire. Uh, with all star Batman and Robin, which was, again, almost satire, Batman was still likeable at some level. Um, but Lance Blastoff, he really, you can't like him. It's impossible. He's so unthoughtful and unlikable, it's just impossible to admire him. Um, the second story, I can't remember what it's called, but it's got Lance Blastoff after doing what he wants with the woman, he leaves her on the alien planet. He leaves her on this dinosaur planet. And she says she, um, and she says she loves him because he's so focused and knows exactly what he wants. Um, she then gets eaten by a dinosaur. Uh, this is somewhat ridiculous and not that well good of a reaction from her, I guess. Um, and in this this one women are in this chapter women are sexualized again. Um, Frank Miller's got something to do with that, I'm just starting to notice now. Uh, anyway, he goes back to his ship, and there are these robots who look like women and don't wear many clothes, and they say that they've found some aliens stranded, and they're completely helpless, but they've got technology, they don't have technology, but they have knowledge, which will prove to be much better, much, very, uh, helpful to the human race. And... Uh, Lance Blastoff starts asking, what can I get from them that will make me money? Um, 
he then proceeds to say, okay, I'll help you guys, and he takes them, gives them lobotomies, and then hands them out as pets to, to kids and adults. This story I liked even less, um, because there wasn't much of a plot, only two things happened, which was le he left the woman and then found, the, found these aliens. Um, it was very simplistic, and it seemed to focus less on being a satire, and more on just being as trashy as possible. Um, there's nothing really more that you can say, because everything that was so inconsiderate about Lance Blastoff in the first chapter occurs in the second chapter as well. Um, the artwork is done in the style of Frank Miller's Sin City comic, but it seems out of place here. Um, I would have preferred if it was in full colour, uh, because really it's very hard to see what's going on. This Sin City style w worked well because the environments were simplistic, or they were organised in a way that you could clearly see what was going on at all times. Particularly in the first in the first chapter, you can have a hard time seeing what's going on because everything's very biological and there's not a lot of machinery. Um, so there's just like these giant dinosaurs and the, this mass of black dots, meaning the scales. Uh, I can you can just about make out what's going on. If there was colour, preferably by Lynn Varley, as partner, then I think this tale would have had a much more science fiction-like feel, and it would have been it would have approved itself better. Now, the Dark Horse Presents issues that it originally appeared in were published as black and white comics. So, again, that's another reason why it was in black and white, but the stories would have been better if they were published in a colour anthology. Furthermore, when you have a look at the second one, uh, for most of the story, you're inside Lance Blastoff's spaceship. Um, again, there's so much, many pipes and machinery going on that you can barely see what's going on. Um, and every, every Frank Miller heavily sexualizes the robots on board, which is kind of pervy in its own way, uh, and it adds nothing to the story. You could say he's trying to satirize the sexu sexualization of women in comics, which, uh, like I said earlier, Sucker Punch by Zack Snyder uh, did well, but it doesn't add anything here, and it doesn't amount to anything. In Sucker Punch, it amounted to something because it, they were trying to escape from it, and eventually they did. Here, there's no reason for it, it's just there. Um, additionally, the critique of American consumerism is carried on to this second chapter. But, again, it feels out of place and wholly unrealistic. Um, as a whole, I didn't really like the Lance Blastoff stories, and I didn't go in expecting to. Um, there's a reason why these stories have been forgotten, um, and they should be forgotten, because they're definitely some of Frank Miller's worst. Like, if I gave this to a child and said, you're going to love Frank Miller, have a look at this, he'd just be like, are you kind of some kind of psychopath or something? There's no way that this is a likeable character or a likeable story. Um, so in the end, I would completely stay clear of these stories. Uh, Frank Miller completists should read it, because they'll uh, see everything from Frank Miller, and they'll uh, be familiar with his storyline. I liked it because it was Frank Miller, and I liked, and although the artwork was hard to see, I respected it because it's Frank Miller's style. But definitely don't start off your reading Frank Miller comics with this. Start off with something like his Daredevil or Ronin or Dark Knight Returns, but this was a big disappointment. So to wrap up, if you have any comments or questions um, or anything else, just uh, send a comment on this video. Um, if you'd like me to review anything in particular, just comment as well and I'll uh, see what I can do about that. Depends if I have it or not. Um, but thank you for listening and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.